Hello everyone and welcome back. Since 2018, my subscribers have been enjoying my base tutorials the most, and during that time I have become a much better base builder. So in this video, I'll be showing you my personal 5 step process to creating the perfect Clash of Clans base. This 5 step process was also used to create most of the base tutorials I have on my channel right now, so make sure to check those out as well if you are on the lookout for an amazing base. So without further ado, let's get into the building your perfect base. Step 1 is choosing what type of base you want. This can be a farming base, hybrid base, anti 3 star base, anti 2 star base, and many many more. Today, I will be building an anti 3 star base. This base is excellent for war when you are in high levels so that you don't get 3 starred. This brings us on to step 2, protecting and identifying our valuables. In my case, because I'm doing an anti 3 star base, the valuables are a clan castle, expos, inferno towers, heroes, and those are all the main valuables when building an anti 3 star base. However, based on the type of base you are building, the things you are protecting may change. Once you know what your valuables are, for example for me it's the clan castle, heroes, uh, expos, etc. We need to find a way to protect them using walls. So as you can see, I put walls and I center everything and I put it pretty close together in a way so that it's harder to get as hard as possible for the attacker to get. And now we're finishing step 2 where we have put the walls around all our valuables in a way that is very very hard to obtain and not just putting it directly around. So now as you can see by looking at this it's very hard to get there and all the defenses are protected. Now on to step number 3, placing the rest of our walls. When building walls, your main priority is to leave the troops away from your valuables. For example here, I'm adding an extra layer of walls without anything in them to protect the expo right there. Another thing you have to keep in mind while doing the walls is to make sure that your clan castle range stays inside of the walls so that they cannot do your clan castle. That is very important for defense. Now if you take a look, most of the places we have, for example, 11 o'clock we have those walls to protect the Inferno Tower and the Expo. On 7 o'clock we have those big layers of defenses to protect the Expos again. On around 4 o'clock we have that nice little layer of walls with that are going to have defenses inside to protect the Inferno Towers. And at around 2 o'clock we have a big layer of walls as well uh, to protect the Expo. Now is step number 4, this is where you place down your defenses and your traps. With the air defenses, I tried putting them as close to the center as possible so that it was harder to get them if you are an attacker. Air defenses are 
very very strong against air attacks so they're very important to protect and then i put the air sweeper so it would push everything away from the air defense to maximize the defense gotten from the air defense next i'm putting cannons and archers the standard defenses and mortars just inside those little boxes or inside the compartments of walls There isn't really too much to this, but make sure that it isn't uneven and that you don't have, for example, three archers on 11 o'clock and only one archer on 2 o'clock. Because then, the person knows that he can attack from one side much better than the other side because there's an imbalance in your base. I put two Teslas on 12 o'clock because I feel that is the weakest point of my base. So I put made, made sure to put as many Teslas, hidden Teslas there as possible. And I put giant bombs in my most valuable areas, such as where my Inferno Towers are my, and my Expos are. Those important places that if an attacker would get there, it wouldn't be very good. And then I put a few bombs on 11, 10 o'clock-ish around there so that they can't use wall breakers to stop the wall breakers from getting inside the base. Skeleton traps are great. I make sure to place them where if a troop would get there, they would get a lot of damage dealt to them. Because what a skeleton trap does is it forces the attacking troops, the offensive troops, to take their time to attack the small skeletons that pretty much have no really effect other than their ability to slow down their attacking troops so when you put them in an area where there's a lot of your defenses your defenses will be able to do a lot of damage to their offensive troops also i made sure to put the air mine and the black air mine near the air defenses and other air targeting defenses so that balloons and dragons and other air to offensive troops might be stopped before they can get to those very important air defenses. Now we're on to our last step, one that is underestimated but is actually very very important and can decide whether you win or lose an attack. Let's start by looking where I put the town hall. I put down the town hall where I have the strongest part of my base. That way because the attacker will want to start where your town hall is in order to get a safe one star so he starts from there and he's going to start from the strongest corner of the base so that way my base will have a much better chance of surviving the wall attack and be much less likely to get three starred also i make sure to put the trash buildings with the least amount of hit points such as barracks and army camps near the stronger part of the base and then things with much more hit points, such as elixir storages on the top part of the base, where it's the weakest part of my base, because I don't want them to start at the weakest part of my base. So I want a bit of extra reinforcements there. That is the end of this video. If you learned something or enjoyed the video, make sure to give a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and want to become a more serious and a much better clasher, then make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below.